Good day to you, my darlings. It's me, Gertie P. No doubt you've read my blog on culture and digitization, and you said to yourself, Gertie, I must know more. So here I am to give you, the people, what you've asked for. Join me as I take you onwards into the video, Gertie Speaks. of this video is going to be a deluxe tour of Google Arts and Culture. I've chosen Google Arts and Culture because in my search of art depository websites it seems to be the most inclusive and the most interactive of all the websites. In my blog I reference Marissa Enhuber discussing the fine line between education and edutainment. What Google Culture and Arts does so well is it poaches the best features of digitization and interactive aspects of social media, the zoom capacity of high definition to deliver cultural artifacts and places of significance to you on your home PC or even on your mobile phone. So let's take a deep dive into some features of Google Arts and Culture as the example and have a one way chat about how art repositories can educate and inspire creativity through social media applications. As in Huber states, museums can become a social space where people can share their own stories. A higher engagement with this online content can mean enhanced learnings. Google Culture and Arts does this so well by creating features such as interactive books, easy to click on links to take you to collections and to individual artworks. High definition means I can get as close to an artifact as I want, something that would be impossible in a museum. I can zoom into the stitching on this 18th century gown or look at the brush strokes of a Monet. I can also use the art projector feature in the application to see how the kiss by Gustav Klimt would look in my laundry. The app even allows me to share this picture with others on my social media sites. So how does this benefit cultural institutions? By featuring on Google Arts and Culture, individual museums create a larger online profile and they can collaborate with their audiences in innovative ways using Google's flashy technology. It's also using this material to personalize the online experience and in a way forming an extended community. Museums such as the Met still have their own web presence and extend their online community through social media avenues such as online blogs. In my view, a digital experience doesn't substitute the joy of being in a museum. It's complementary to it. By creating a global community that can visit and participate in activities at any time that suits them, possibly exciting the desire to go to these places even more. Today, I use my Google Culture and Art app on my phone to take a stroll into the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. I also projected a 3D digitization of the Nine Dome Mosque in Afghanistan, a place I may never be fortunate enough to step foot in. So if you are an art lover, a student, or just plain bored of watching TV, get online and have a play with Google Arts and Culture. There are other websites such as Europeana that focus on European museums exclusively uh, or asta.org, which has a different setup to Google Arts and Culture. Um, and they even offer complimentary Zoom backgrounds for your next uh, COVID-19 stay at home office meeting. So stay safe and take the time to enjoy the art, my lovelies. Bye.